How did the pharaohs build the pyramids? Hello and welcome, hope you're all doing well. The pyramids of Giza have baffled scientists and researchers for centuries, especially when it comes to the Great Pyramid, or what is known as the Pyramid of Khafu, which consists of 2,300,000 stone blocks. These stones are so huge that each one weighs more than 70 tons, not to mention the height of the Great Pyramid, which is about 150 meters. Of course, most people hate the language of numbers, but these are impressive numbers. I mean, how did the pharaohs lift all these heavy stones to such a height? Such a task is considered difficult and nearly impossible to complete in our time, despite all of our progress, development and technology. So, how did the pharaohs build such magnificent engineering structures 4,000 years ago? Even though they were not as advanced as we are now, and all they had back then were basic metal construction tools. What's weird though, is the fact that it's unclear how these people managed to stack the stones on top of each other without using cement or other types of adhesive. This can be answered in two ways. The first is that they had abilities that we are unaware of, which is a speculative possibility. The second idea is that they were able to advance to a high level of construction methods which made it possible not to rely on complex sophisticated technologies and tools or maybe these construction methods were so simple that no one thought they were possible hello my name is steve in this episode of midnight questions we will answer the question how did the pharaohs build the pyramids the topic of how the pharaohs built the pyramids is not new and there are numerous theories associated with this project some are completely unacceptable and others are acceptable and debatable in some way. While some theories and hypotheses are amusing, such as the idea that the pyramids were built by aliens, although it may seem like a silly subject to some, many people believe that aliens built the pyramids. However, it should be noted that this theory is illogical and remains only a hypothesis. Another strange hypothesis that some people believe in is that the pharaohs were giants, like the giants in Attack of the Titan anime. This could be because the concept of titans or giants makes building pyramids seem logical, but in reality it is an incorrect theory, and their average height was quite normal, and it can be proven by the mummy bodies in museums which are not huge giants or anything else. Furthermore, the pharaohs coffins in museums or pyramids are of normal size fitting the average human height. Simply put, the bodies of the pharaohs were similar to ours. When we were children, they told us the traditional story of how the pharaohs built the pyramids. It is said that the pharaohs moved billions of huge stones, each weighing tens of tons, from southern Egypt to the site of the pyramids. After that, they built a long, sloping and encircling embankment made of brick, earth and sand that increased in height and length as the pyramid rose. Stone blocks were hauled up the ramps using sleds, rollers and levers. This story requires some thought first. To put this idea into action, the paths built around the pyramid must be made of concrete because the soil cannot support the weight of tens of tons, not to mention the weight of the workers and balls allegedly used to drag the pieces of stone. Furthermore, the wood cylinders cannot support the weight of all the stones. They will require wheels that are extremely strong and durable enough to withstand the enormous pressure and weight. As a result, this theory is also illogical. Not to mention that the ramp they built had to be 10 times the size and height of the pyramids. In addition, removing everything from around the pyramid without leaving a trace makes the theory even more illogical because that means making an accomplishment that rivals the construction of the pyramids and it is a scientifically impossible theory. Therefore, we can say that all we've been taught as kids about how the pyramids were built was illogical and not true at all. One of the theories that recently emerged to support the previous one is that the pharaohs sprinkled water on the round wood beneath the stones to aid in transportation. And when it comes to over 2 million massive stone pieces that were moved from southern Egypt to the site of the Great Pyramid now, we find another theory suggesting that the area around the pyramid at the time was a ravine, and therefore they relied on boats and ships to transport the stone. But all these ideas are just justifications in support of the previous traditional theory which seems illogical and forces one to think about the questions rather than the answers. One of the most important questions is how they managed to raise the stones to such a great height without the use of cranes, aircraft or modern engines. The answer to that is simply not available to this day. Did the pharaohs have devices that allowed them to defy gravity to be able to lift stones easily? Unfortunately, there is no evidence to support such a theory yet. Anyway, let's move away from that topic. 
How were the massive stones installed without the use of any adhesives? Again, the traditional answer was a theory suggesting that they did this by constantly moving the stones until the air between them was removed. However, there is no evidence to support this theory, so it remains a guess. Not to mention that the vacuum in the air necessitates advanced techniques. I know that you're still waiting for the answer or at least the better theory. That is why we're going to talk about the perfectly flat faces of the stones, which is one of the most amazing aspects of the pyramids. The Great Pyramid stones are shaped like regular rectangles and squares, and if we assume that the stone pieces were carved with simple tools and techniques, the results cannot be the construction of the Great Pyramid, because carving more than 2 million pieces of stone is not an easy task especially when all the pieces are equal and cut with great care and precision. This is why the answer of carving blocks by hand is completely illogical. In other words, all of the theories and techniques we have shared with you so far are incorrect and will leave you with more questions than answers. However, if we assume that the stones used to construct the pyramids were not carved or cut, but were manufactured in the same way that building bricks are manufactured today, we'll find what is called limestone concrete hypothesis. This theory was developed by Swiss researcher von Dalkin and French researcher Joseph Davidovitz. These two assume that the blocks of the Great Pyramid were not carved stone but mostly a form of limestone concrete or man-made stone. Such concrete included clay and chemicals that are heated before they are added to the concrete. When the limestone concrete dries, it resembles natural stone and has a lifespan of thousands of years. You can imagine that this hypothesis will solve all of the previous hypotheses problems, eliminating the need for carving, cutting, transporting stones over long distances or carrying them up to high altitude. But how did these scientists come to this conclusion? What is the foundation upon which they base their argument? It all happened when a group of scientists were looking at the secret room in the pyramid's heart. As a result, they used a variety of rays to examine the entire pyramid. However, they discovered that the devices they were using provided them with contradictory and illogical data and results. The only explanation they came up with for this problem is that some of the stone in the pyramid contained a large amount of water that the stones cannot naturally contain. That is why they suspected that these rocks and stones were man-made rather than natural. So according to his beliefs, Joseph experimented with finding a mixture similar to the one which the stones of the pyramids were made. In the end, the experiment was successful and the positive results obtained allowed Joseph to create stones of the same size and stick them together without the use of adhesives. Currently, this team of scientists is working hard to recreate the concrete used by the pharaohs, even if it is one of the pharaohs many secrets in many fields such as mathematics, astronomy, chemistry and mummification. In other words, the pyramid's rocks are made of cement-like material that was poured into special moulds to create stones of enormous size and weight, then dried to form coherent and compact rocks. As a result, this could be the method used by the pharaohs to construct this magnificent structure. They could have used the same technique in other structures such as the temples and massive obelisks. That is, instead of moving and cutting stones that were created by pouring a special building mixture into large moulds. Of course, this hypothesis is not entirely correct, but it is the most logical and may be another theory that clarifies the issue may emerge in the future. In addition to all of this, no one can deny the pharaoh's progress in several areas, which we could not achieve now despite all of what we have reached in science and technology. And that's it guys, we've reached the end of the episode and we've simply answered the question, how did the pharaohs build the pyramids? And like usual, if you have any question in the middle of the night that's causing you confusion and keeping you awake, please leave it in the comments section so that we can answer it. If you enjoy the video, please like and share it. And for those of you who are seeing us for the first time, don't forget to subscribe and press the bell button to receive notifications of new videos.